Hello YouTube friends, Chrissy here at A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. For today's video, I am sharing a winter study that we completed from January through February of this year on what started as a nature study on the moon. It led into a women in history study on Katherine Johnson, the space race, and NASA's Apollo program. I wasn't sure if I was even going to share this unit study as winter has passed, uh, but I had all this random footage and so I thought I'd collect it together and put together a video maybe to give you ideas for a future winter study. So in today's video, you're going to see some nature study and science, history, math, and a lot of learning through play. I'll begin with these beautiful books. The Welcome to the Museum series is my favorite series of books. It's the type of book one can look at and read over and over. It's suitable for all ages, my youngest, my teenagers, and adults can all appreciate, and it's just a feast for the eyes. There are wonderful reference books, inspiration for nature journaling, great on the coffee table and on a shelf. I will admit, however, that it wasn't a most used resource during our moon studies. We read through the first pages of telescopes, modern observations, and there's only one spread on the moon. The same with the accompanying activity book. I only reference to two pages. I make copies since I have more than one student. The activity book is just as beautiful as the book and it almost stings a bit to tear it apart. Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History is the resource that I used to first introduce Katherine Johnson to the kids. It has a short introduction covering the highlights of her story. While the bios are short, in my opinion, they are in depth for a good introduction. Counting on Katherine, this picture book biography, along with a principle from Teachers Pay Teachers, were the main resources for learning more on Katherine Johnson. An engaging read aloud for kids, there is a repeating line, you can count on me, that the kids pick up on and tells the main idea of this book that Catherine played a major role in NASA's early space exploration. I enjoy the background story on Catherine as a child and her family. And I also appreciate how the author explains the kinds of mathematics and math language Catherine used during Apollo 13. This, in this book, she's not just referenced as a computer, like in many other resources. This printable packet from Teachers Pay Teachers, and I'll link it down below. Obviously, it is worksheet heavy, so I just picked out the ones that seemed like the less busy work, if that makes any sense. Um, I had Bella dictate a reading assessment. She completed a Venn diagram on differences and similarities between herself and Catherine. And then she did complete a few coloring pages during our read alouds. As we tapped into our inner Katherine Johnson and explored the world of numbers, I came up with a few hands-on math games. The first was launching our own Apollo, which we called Apollo 88, and I'll explain. First, Bella had to create several prototypes of these rockets that are launched by blowing into a straw attached to the rocket. I put out um, on the floor a printout of Earth, where we launch from, and one of the moon where we wanted the rocket to land. I encouraged Bella to measure the distance from our Earth to the moon, and the distance was 88 inches, and that's how this mission got the name of Apollo 88. It took several launches to figure out that the rocket needed some tinkering, so Bella ended up attaching a plastic spoon to help it uh, go further. With each launch, I had her record how far the rocket launched and how short it was from the moon, 88 inches. And so here she's showing her work for each launch. It took five launches for Apollo 88 to land on the moon. Another fun activity as we explored the world of numbers was creating a 225 math frame. We used a large cardboard square and it took precise measurements 
To create even blocks and number in each block, we made 225 number chips out of thick watercolor paper, and of course, Bella added an artsy touch with watercolor paints. Bella's favorite form or way to use this was just as a puzzle, piecing together, matching all the pieces. Another material we had fun with while exploring the world of numbers are the infamous sunblocks math box. I know we use these a lot here on my channel, but that'll tell you that this material is truly loved. If you don't know what these are, they're wooden number blocks where the height of the number represents its value. So first, Noah mastered counting backwards. And this inspired another rocket launch. We paired the sunblocks with our Grimm's rainbow and used Grimm's large marbles as our rockets. It took several launches and adjusting our platform to get it right. And here through learning through play, uh, we're covering number sequencing, spatial awareness, geometry, building, STEM, critical thinking, uh, problem solving, and logic. Three, two, one, bless up! Oh, we had two casualties. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Continuing with our learning through play, we loved this board game, Sums in Space. It's an addition and subtraction game, but what caught my attention about this one is that there are two ways to play. It's a traditional classic board game and a cooperative game. The board is pretty simple, a galactic type of scene. The game pawns are classic pawns, and we do like to swap them out for Safari LTD tubes figures. Player roles solves the math equation along the way there are obstacles like the black hole or meeting the even stevens twins and captain odd duck the traditional game is a race to get to the ship first the cooperative game is a race against time to get all astronauts back to the ship on time before blast off a super fun game to practice essential math skills adding subtraction comparing numbers evens and odds I found this kit by Smithsonian Timeline Science Space Exploration at Ollie's for a few dollars. The kit included a 6 inch plastic rocket model for the kids to puzzle together and paint or decorate with the stickers included. This kit also included this book covering facts about the planets, but also on the space race. Lots of good information about the space race, the Apollo program. While I read and played some videos about the Apollo program, Noah enjoyed playing with loose parts paired with the Safari LTD tubes figures and Play-Doh to reenact Apollo 11. Our collection of space themed figures are uh, a combination of Safari LTD tubes and Wild Republic figures. They're utilized for all sorts of play and games like sensory bins, small world, imaginary play. They're also great for board games, math manipulatives, for some Montessori inspired activities like three part cards and object to picture match. I created these posters to label the parts of a spacesuit and a space shuttle orbiter. We also have a few models and toys that we enjoyed um, pairing with this to learn about a space shuttle orbiter. So we have this pull back or draw back space shuttle we bought at a science museum and Noah has enjoyed uh, putting together this Lego set. It's called uh, Lego City Space Mars Research Shuttle and it does include a few other smaller pieces as well. 
We also reference to a few lessons in the good and the beautiful uh, space science unit study and that's how we utilize these unit studies by the good and the beautiful We don't do cover to cover or lesson for lesson. We just jump on in and utilize what we need more reading on uh, the space race in this unit study we also worked on space exploration and again labeling parts of a space shuttle which we did with our toys we had a lot of fun at memorizing a uh, timeline on the history of space and we enjoyed referencing to all the amazing photography in this unit study another favorite resource are dover coloring books this is my first book about outer space. I've mentioned that the kids enjoy these coloring books during read-alouds, but this time around we did keep our hands very busy with um, other things like clay and play-doh and building puzzles. However, this is an awesome resource. I love the illustrations and the small snippets of information to accompany it. This was a neat toy to have. This is the Discovery Kid Planetarium Projector. The set includes three slides, uh, one of the planets, galaxies, Milky Way stars, and the moon. I found this a while back at the Target dollar spot, picked it up for my preschooler to use during our read aloud. It can be used as a labyrinth or with the magnetic pen to drag the correct amount of pebbles to each uh, corner, numbered corner for some number quantity and recognition. Our favorite toy during this unit study was uh, these light up rocket launchers by Nat Geo. Super fun to launch at dusk and if you want to make it into a math activity, you can measure the distances of your launches. Okay, so I've shared about Katherine Johnson, the space race, the Apollos, a bit on space shuttles. So let's move on to our nature study on the moon. As I've mentioned, this was a wintertime study in the month of January, and in that month, we recorded a moon calendar, and it was so much fun, uh, especially for my Bella. We used a moon calendar printable from Chicky and Rue, and um, we used watercolored pencils to give it a nice effect, and this is something that I would like to continue. It made us really present every evening and appreciating nature's wonder at night. More printables from Chicky and Rue. I believe this is from a prep pack called Luna, and I only printed off what interested us, but the pack is larger. So this is a poster on the types of full moons. There is vocabulary words, a word search on the vocabulary words, as well as tracing or handwriting, a fun worksheet on a Luna scavenger hunt, and then we completed this moon craters activity that was a lot of fun. So we used different sized spheres or balls, a pan of flour, and a few measuring tools like a ruler and measuring tape. So first we measured the circumference of the sphere and recorded it. Then we dropped the sphere into the pan of flour and measured and recorded the size of the crater it created. Such a great activity to discuss and practice circumference and measurements. also loved this learning pack on the surface by Firefly Nature School. By the way, I do want to mention that I believe that Firefly Nature School collabs with Chicky and Rue and uses some of her art. If you do purchase the prep pack on Chicky and Rue's site and then this moon study on Firefly Nature School, you might get some duplicate worksheets or activities. Uh, so make sure to cross-reference that. 
these learning packs by Firefly Nature School, there's always educational information to read, a prompt for an activity outside, which I love, a hands-on project. Uh, this one was creating a moon model out of dough or clay and labeling it. You can use a simple salt dough. We used air dry clay and I made labels with toothpicks and small pieces of paper. And then uh, I threw in the various tools to make the craters on the moon. And if you don't want to get messy with clay or dough, there's also a labeling the moon worksheet included in the pack. This is a 10 gram printable from NASA Kids Club. I have it here as a reminder to share their website with you. You can find loads of resources, free printables, um, activity ideas, and games. So I'll link the uh, website down below. Another fun and free printable is this Oreo moon phase match. We use Oreo cookies to recreate the moon phase, a very dangerous activity for me as I love Oreos. Uh, and if you do want to skip out on the Oreos, you can also do this with dough or modeling clay. These are moon phase blocks by Uncle Goose. So first, the quality is super nice. This is a nine block set that shows each of the eight moon phases. So two debossed sides feature a moon phase and its cycle location. And this was fun to make imprints in dough. Four printed sides show moon rise and set times, tidal effects, a phase illustration, and the moon's location in relation to the sun. Also included is one bonus block on the lunar eclipse. These are made in the USA out of sustainable Michigan basswood and printed in non-toxic ink. These blocks are so fun for exploring the moon phases for younger children. Uh, you can use these as an object to picture match if you pair them with moon phase cards. Uh, you can also sequence the moon phase. Of course, a child can just use them for building and stacking. And like I said, we were able to use that debossed side for making imprints in Play-Doh. Just overall, a wonderful open-ended material. These moon affirmation cards by Hearth Magic on Etsy are just too beautiful not to share. I included them in our calm down basket, but these would also be great to read in the morning or in the evening as a morning or nighttime routine, during meditation, uh, during a poetry tea time, or just to hand out to the kids. Something that we didn't get around to during this unit study, but I do want to share anyway, is a full moon tea party idea from this lovely book, The Tea Party Book by Lucille Penner. There are tea party themes for many occasions, a classic teddy bear tea party, a Valentine tea party, tea by the sea, and then other fun ones like a Japanese tea party, full moon tea party. Every theme is the same layout, uh, so it provides a poem, a menu with recipes, uh, crafting table settings and party favors, and of course, a recipe for the tea. This resource is just absolutely delightful, and I will have a link for it down below. So before I share the books we read out loud or some together during this unit study, first I'll share some activities I have to help little hands keep busy and ears open during read-alouds. Puzzles, and we have two here, one a wooden jigsaw puzzle by Melissa and Doug, and a 60 piece from Ravensburger. I've shared in a previous video that this is our favorite brand of puzzles. The quality of the pieces are durable and just fit easily together, making it frustration free for the kids. The images are always clear and good quality as well. The Melissa and Doug wooden jigsaw puzzles are better suited for young children and we have several of them but I will admit that the wooden pieces can be tricky to put together because it is wood and naturally there will be rough edges so piecing it together can be frustrating for the littles. Next we used a lot uh, of our wonderfully scented soft non-toxic homemade play-doh. 
I have the best recipe and I've never gone back to any other recipe or store-bought. Of course, I'm going to share the recipe in the description box for you. And we love pairing our dough with loose parts. And finally, the picture books we read through this unit study. The first is The Moon Inside by Sandra Fetter. This is one of the most wonderful children's books I've read. Yellow is Ella's favorite color because she loves the bright sunny daytime. But when nighttime comes, she's afraid of the dark until her mother encourages her to look at the glow of the moon and all of the gentle creatures of the night, listening to the chirping of crickets, watching fireflies, a sweet story of learning to appreciate nature in its nightly wonder promoting and fostering family relationships, and the illustrations are so elegant in my opinion. A Big Mooncake for a Little Star by Grace Lynn. My favorite, favorite book about the moon phase and Grace Lynn, one of my favorite children's authors. Little Star loves the delicious mooncake that she bakes with her mama. But what happens when she can't resist a nibble? You guessed it, the moon phases. Several years ago when we first read this book, we baked a big moon cake to eat during Read Aloud, a gorgeous picture book that tells a whimsical origin story of the phases of the moon. Moon, a peek through picture book by Brita Tekentrup. Over deserts and forests, the Arctic tundra and tropical beaches, the moon shines down on creatures all around the world. My preschooler loves this series of Pika Through books. They are just super fun and engaging. This moon title is a fun one to discuss about animal and nature's cycles in relation to the moon, such as bird migration and sea turtle nesting. It is really unfortunate that the moon shapes are not accurate depictions of the moon phases. Otherwise, it would be another fun resource to introduce moon phases to early readers. Owl Moon by Jane Yolen. This story is about a little girl and her father who go owling on a winter night. They call out with owl calls. Sometimes there isn't an owl, but sometimes there is. I love that message because it's one that I constantly remind to my young ones. We cannot control nature to put on a show for us. But if you're quiet, still, and taken how perfectly imperfect nature is, you'll be gifted wonderful experiences from it. I love this book because through its poetic story and lovely illustrations, it depicts a special companionship of a girl and her dad, as well as humankind to the natural world. Max and the Tag Along Moon by Floyd Cooper. Max is a boy who loves his grandpa, and when they must say goodbye after a visit, Grandpa promises Max that the moon at Grandpa's house is the same moon that will follow him all the way home. On the ride car home, Max watches as the moon tags along. Did you ever do that as a kid? I remember as a kid being in complete awe and wonder as to how the moon always followed me home. This book holds a special place in my heart because of that nostalgia of my own childhood now passed on to my kids. Also, when my husband is away on duty, we've always shared that sentiment that when we're missing each other, we can always look and meet at the moon every night. A sappy little story of our sacrifices as a military family, and it's also why one of our daughters is named Luna and how our schoolhouse became the Moonlit Schoolhouse. All right, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. That's a free way to support my channel. And I also love hearing from you guys in the comments. These videos are actually my favorite to share. I love putting together unit studies and sharing ideas of learning through play and how we can weave in together different subjects like math and history and geography and science and nature studies. But more than all these ideas for activities or sharing recommendations of all these resources that you must go buy right now, 
um, I hope that this video inspires your family to step out of the worksheet uh, and meet your children at their level and engage in some wonderful, meaningful learning through play.